Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo. Makinig, manood na sa teleradyo. Teleradyo, teleradyo Marcelo. Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon, magkahatid sa gagakibat ay diskusyon. Sama-sama tayo. Kahit magkalayo Sa programang ito Riyak ang pagkatuto Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo for another lesson in English. Good afternoon to all our grade 9 junior high school students. This is teacher Vanessa and I hope that you are all safe for watching this video lesson in English. So are you ready to study our topic for this afternoon? Could you please type the word ready in our comment section? Great, let's start. Allow me to show our objective for today's lesson. And these are the following. Number one, compare and contrast ideas listened to. Number two, change direct to indirect speech and vice versa. Now it is very important to maintain order when we study, right? Here are some house rules for this afternoon session. Number one, Turn off gadgets or put it into silent mode. Number two, listen and show respect to the teacher. Number three, jot down important notes from the lesson. Number four, pay attention to every detail of the lesson as you are expected to produce an output later. Number five, enjoy learning. All right. So this time we invited two students to share their insights from last week's discussion. Good afternoon, Agafea of 9-1. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you, Agafea? I'm good. Um, okay. All right. I'm still hoping that our... Okay, have you eaten your lunch? Lunch, have you eaten your lunch? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Okay, Agafea, can you share with us what you learned from our last week's lesson? Yes. Hi, I'm Agafea Amifayo from 91, and last week's lesson are seeds of Emma Watson about feminism and upper wing space tips about women at risk. Okay, thank you, Agafea. How about we have Roan of 91? Hi, Roan. Hello, po, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, po. Would you mind sharing your insights with us about the last week's lesson? Yes, but, um, last week we tackled about bias and prejudice. We all know that bias is a thought in favor in or against a particular thing, while prejudice is judging something without know knowing anything about it. Also, bias is the result of prejudice. Okay, very good. So I guess you really did listen to our lesson last week and great job. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the following sentences. Okay. As you notice, these statements are divided into two sets. We have set A and set B. First, let us read those statements in set A. Number one, Emma Watson said, I think women are scared of feeling powerful and strong. Okay, 
I think women are scared of feeling powerful and strong and brave sometimes. Okay. Number two, Oprah Winfrey said, excellence is the best deterrent to racism or sexism. Okay. Now let us read those statements in set B. Number one, Emma Watson said that she thought women were scared of feeling powerful and strong and brave sometimes. Number two, Oprah Winfrey said that excellence was the best deterrent to racism or sexism. All right, now my question is, what made sentences A different from sentences B? Let us call a student to answer, okay? Uh, good afternoon, Rosaline of 9-1. Hello, Rosaline. Good afternoon, Puma. Okay, Rosaline, could you please tell us your answer? Yes, Puma. Um, I think the difference between the two sentences po, is that sen in sentence A contains quotation marks, which the speaker actual words, while sentence B is when the words of the speakers are changed and moreover po i noticed that there are verbs in sentence a that are changed in sentence b wow very good okay number one unlike set b the sentences in set a contain quotation marks number two the verbs used in set a were changed in set b as what rosalind said number three Sentences in set B use the conjunction that. Okay? Now, my question, my second question is, when do we use sentences A and sentences B? Okay, so let us invite another student. Let's have Gian of 9 Benigno. Hi, Gian. Hi, Puma. Gian? Yes, Puma. Hello. Okay. So what is your answer for my second question? I'll repeat. When do we use sentences A and sentences B? As for what I have observed, we use the same construction on sentence A whenever we wanted to directly restate someone's words without adding new terms to introduce their statement. That's their difference. We use the same assemble in statement B when we want to repeat a speech. However, we have to add a new term rather than using quotation marks. Okay, very good, uh, Gian. Okay, so to make it more clear, sentences in set A are used when we want to describe what someone said using the exact words in quotation marks, okay? They are called the direct speeches or quoted speeches. On the other hand, Sentences in set B, which are used to describe what someone said without quoting the exact words, are called indirect speeches or reported speeches. Okay. A reported speech is derived from a sentence consisting of two parts. The explanatory or introductory part and the quoted part. The explanatory part explains or tells who says, asks, commands, or requests. On the other hand, the coded part shows the exact words of the speaker. Here are some examples. The teacher said the computer can answer all questions from different topics. Brian said, I passed the exam in English. In number one, the explanatory or introductory part is the teacher said, and the coded part is the computer can answer all questions from different topics. For number two sentence, the explanatory or introductory part is Brian said, and the coded part is, I passed the exam in English. Now let us convert uh, these sentences to indirect or reported speech. Number one, 
the teacher said that the computer could answer all questions from different topics. Number two, Brian said that he had passed the exam in English. Okay. Now, reported or indirect speech is usually used to talk about the past. So we normally change the tense of the word spoken. Usually, we go back a tense. Let's study these sentences and how these tenses are being changed from direct to indirect speech. For the first example, we have this sentence. She said it's cold. Present simple. Then it will be changed to past simple. She said it was cold. From is, it became was. Okay. The next sentence, present continuous. She said, I'm teaching English online. From present continuous, it will be changed to past continuous. She said she was teaching English online. Next, present perfect simple. She said, I've been on the web since 1999. So from present perfect simple, it will become past perfect simple. She said she had been on the web since 1999, okay? Next, present perfect continuous example. She said, I've been teaching English for seven years. Now from present perfect continuous, it will become past perfect continuous. She said she had been teaching English for seven years, okay? Next, past simple. She said, I won the first prize in the contest. From past simple, it will become past perfect. She said she had won the first prize in the contest, okay? Now, past continuous example. She said, I was teaching uh, my students about trigonometry. So from past continuous, it will become past perfect continuous. She said she had been teaching her students about trigonometry, okay? Now, past perfect, she said the lesson had already started when he arrived. Now, for this uh, situation, uh, past perfect will not be changed to any tense. It means that there will be no change. So, when we change it from direct to indirect, this will become the sentence. She said the lesson had already started when he arrived. No change in tense. Same as past perfect continuous. She said... I'd already been teaching for five minutes. She said, uh, in direct speech, she said she'd already been teaching for five minutes. In, in addition, uh, model verbs like will, can, must, shall, and may are changed to would, could, had to, should, and might in indirect or reported speech. However, we have to keep in mind that the change of tense depends on the verb used in the introductory part. Here are some examples, okay? So for direct or coded speech, Jane says, I enjoy my computer lessons. So the word says, in the introductory part is in present tense, right? So what are we going to do? To change it to indirect or reported speech because it is in present simple or the verb is in present simple, there will be no change in tense. So the example is, Jane says that she enjoys her computer lessons, okay? 
Also, the verb in the coded part remains present even if the verb in the introductory part is past tense. When the coded part says or asks for a fact or general truth, for example, Clifton said the computer is a wonder machine. We all know that computer is a wonder machine. Okay, so it's a general truth. So although the verb in the introductory part is in past tense, there will be no change in tense for the coded part when we change it from direct to indirect. Example, Clifton said that the computer is a wonder machine. Okay? Please take note that when the coded part is, de is declarative, it is transformed into a that clause. However, it is possible to omit it. I have or we have some examples here. Direct coded or coded speech. Mr. Florendo says the computer has all the answers to all our questions. Indirect or reported speech. Mr. Florendo says that the computer has all answers to all our questions. Or we can actually omit the conjunction. Mr. Florendo says the computer has all the answers to all our questions. Okay. In changing, now how about in changing pronouns? Okay. In changing pronouns, we have to consider the following. First, okay, change the first person pronoun in indirect or reported speech if pronoun in the explanatory or intro introductory part is third person pronoun. Example, she said, I will watch a play. She said that she would watch a play. They say, we have finished the movie. They say that they have finished the movie. Okay? Second rule. Do not change the first person pronoun in indirect or reported speech. A pronoun in the explanatory or introductory part is also first person pronoun. Examples. We said we follow the parade. We said that we followed the parade. I said I have seen the movie. I said that I had seen the movie. Okay? Third rule. Change. Okay. Now for the third rule, change the second person pronoun in indirect or reported speech according to the object in the explanatory or introductory part. Examples. She said to me, you will need this medicine. She said to me that I would need this medicine. They said to him, you won the contest. They said to him that he had won the contest. And lastly, do not change the third person pronoun in the indirect or reported speech. Okay, examples. Okay, one more time. Do not change the third person pronoun in the indirect or reported speech. Examples. She says she is beautiful. She says that she is beautiful. He said they watched an action movie. He said that they had watched an action movie. All right. So before we proceed, do you have or do you know someone in coming grade seven who likes writing news or who likes uh, uh, broadcasting, writing editorial, uh, why not tell them about the special program in journalism? Let's watch this video.
Now let us practice. I want you to read carefully the examples of direct and indirect sentences and then tell whether the sentences changed from direct to indirect are correctly written. Now you write your choice whether correct or incorrect. And you have to explain your answer. You can actually explain it by citing a rule on changing direct speech into indirect or reported speech, okay? So let's have number one. Mia said, I want to watch the game. Mia said that she wanted to watch the game. Okay, let us call a student to answer. Okay, let's have Gabriel of 9-1. Hello, Gabriel. Hello po, ma'am. Yes, anak. How are you? I am good po. Okay, anak, could you please answer number one? Is it correct or incorrect? Correct po, ma'am. Okay, why? I noticed that they changed the first person pronoun I in reported speech to she. I also noticed that the word want was changed to the word wanted to be in a past simple tense. They also removed the quotation marks to express the statement of the speaker in the reported or indirect way. Okay. All right. Very good, Gabriel. That is correct. You also have, okay, change the word want in present simple to wanted in past simple tense and then change the first person pronoun I in indirect or uh, reported speech to she since the pronoun in the explanatory or introductory part is third, per, uh, third person pronoun. So very good, Gabriel. Thank you so much. Okay, let's have number two. Lance said, I am going with her. Lance said that he was going with her. Let's see. Hello, Nikki of 91. Hi, po, ma'am. Hi, good afternoon, Nikki. What is your good answer? My answer is correct. Why? The first sentence is in present continuous form, which need to change in past continuous tense to convert a direct speech to indirect speech. The pronoun should also be changed from first to third person. All right, very good. So you have to change the first person pronoun I in indirect or reported speech to he. So this is actually similar to number one. Okay, thank you, Nikki. Thank you so much. Okay, let's have number three. I saw the play with Brayden, said Pauline. Pauline said that she had seen the play with Brayden. Good afternoon, Andrew of 91. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. <laughs> Could you please answer number three? Uh, my answer is correct because and in the why? sentence of number three, I noticed that the word saw, which is in the past tense, is changed to its past perfect form, had seen. And also, the first person pronoun, I, indicating the speaker, is altered to she. Okay, very good. Uh, Andrew, very good. Thank you so much. Four, Rika said, Mommy and I will watch the play in Resorts World. Rico said that he and his mommy would watch the play in Resorts World. Okay, let us call Christine of Nine Benigno. Hi, Christine. Hi, po, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what is your answer in number four? They are both written correct because the pronoun I, which is the first person pronoun, should be changed into he since the pronoun in the second sentence is speaking into a third person point of view. It also changes the modal will to would, and it doesn't change the name mommy because it is indicated in the reported speech. Very good. Okay, thank you so much, Christine. And I guess that you are really, uh, you really did understand the discussion earlier. Okay, thank you so much. Last but not the least, let's have number five. Grandmother said to me, you will learn from the play. Grandmother said to me that I would learn from the play. Okay, let's call Angela of Nine Benigno also. Angela, good afternoon. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Okay. What is your answer in number five? My answer is correct po, ma'am. Okay. Why? Uh, obviously, ma'am, uh, we're going to change the modal will to modal would. 
uh, like you said earlier in rules in changing pronoun, change the second person pronoun you to I based on the object in the explanatory or introductory part. Yes. Okay. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Angela of Nine Benigno. So I, I am really surprised and, and thankful that you really did understand our lesson for this afternoon. So, okay. Um, before we go to our quiz, all right. Um, here is Ma Maria Ana Javier for more information on our topic. Mom Javier. Good afternoon, class. This is Ma Me and Javier greeting you a blessed day, and I hope you learned a lot in your activity with Ma Vanessa. Now for my segment, Who Says? You will learn some Disney quotes that will move you and motivate you. They're not just for children, but for adults too. If we pay close attention to them, we may just find the answers to life that we've been searching for. So let me give your day a dose of magic with this unforgettable Disney quotes. In our previous lessons, we learned about biases and prejudices. One of the biases that people experience today is beauty bias. We live in the world where physical appearance is very highly regarded. The animated Disney princesses teach us unforgettable lessons about love, independence, and women's place in the world. If you have watched the movie Aladdin, the main character said, do not be fooled by commonplace appearance. Like so many things, it is not what outside, but what is inside that counts. This quote reminds us that we should not be deceived by appearances. We have to search for the soul. It is what actually counts. Beautiful or not, we must not be afraid to dream. There are people who will try to pull us down when they see us succeed. Walt Disney once said, All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. It means that courage is trusting yourself to overcome your fears and doing what you are afraid to do. Fear not to dream big despite the challenges and skeptics in life. When we experience failures, think of this famous line in the movie Dumbo. He said, the very things that hold you down are going to lift you up. It tells us to love ourselves enough to accept our own flaws. Those flaws are what make us beautifully different. If you have watched the movie Rio, the character Blue said, I'm flying, I'm flying. I'm not an ostrich, I'm not an ostrich. This line show that we must never ever accept our limitations because human spirit is eternal. The most difficult limitations and circumstances are necessary tools that will help us become better version of ourselves. Try to reflect on what the warrior Mulan uttered. She said, believe you can then you will. This means that believing in yourself is really powerful. Believing in yourself is everything. If you can, if you think you can. You can if you think you can. I want to end this segment by sharing the short but meaningful quotes about life. In these trying times, just think of what Snow White said. Remember, you are the one who can fill the world with sunshine. Winnie the Pooh said, some people care too much. I think it's called love. Peter Pan said, think happy thoughts. Pocahontas said, listen with your heart. You will understand. Dory said, just keep swimming. I hope you learned a lot from our segment today. Once again, this is Mame and Javier leaving you these hashtags. Practice motivation and love. Stop discrimination and hate. Do not spread the virus. Do not be a virus. Thank you and have a great day. Back to you, Ma'am Vanessa. Thank you, ma'am. Now, are you ready for our quiz? Okay. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to convert the following direct speeches to indirect speeches. 
Okay, let us start. Number one, Christopher said to me, you are in danger for using computer. Christopher said to me, you are in danger for using computers. Okay, A, Christopher said to me that you were in danger for using computers. B. Christopher said to me that I was in danger for using computers. And what is your answer? Please type your answer in our comment box, okay? All right. So, the correct answer is letter B. Christopher said to me that I was in danger for using computers. Okay? I hope that you did uh, get the correct answer in number one. Okay? All right. Let's proceed in number two. The guest speaker adds, There is a threat that man would become dependent on computers. The guest speaker's, uh, speaker adds, there is a threat that man would become dependent on computers. A, the guest speaker adds that there is a threat that man would become dependent on computers. B, the guest speaker adds that there was a threat that man would become dependent on computers. And what is your answer? Okay, the correct answer is letter A. The guest speaker adds that there is a threat that man would become dependent on computers. Okay, congratulations to those who got number two correctly. Let's go to number three. He insists computers can translate scientific papers. He insists computers can translate scientific papers. A. He insists that computers can translate scientific papers. B. He insists that computers could translate scientific papers. What is your answer? Okay, the correct answer in number three is A. He insists that computers can translate scientific papers. Okay, let's go to number four. She commented, Computers will direct lights, but they will not replace pilots. Again, she commented, computers will direct lights, but will not replace pilots. A, she commented that computers will direct lights, but they will not replace pilots. Letter B, she commented that computers would direct lights, but they would not replace pilots. What is your answer in number four? Type your answer in our comment section. Okay. The correct answer in number four is letter B. She commented that computers would direct lights, but they would not replace pilots. Okay? All right, so let's go to our last number. Number five. The teacher says the main purpose of computers is not for entertainment. 
the teacher says the main purpose of computers is not for entertainment. A. The teacher says that the main purpose of computers was not for entertainment. B. The teacher says that the main purpose of computers is not for entertainment. What is your answer? Okay, and the correct answer is letter B. The teacher says that the main purpose of computers is not for entertainment. Okay, so very good guys. I'm so proud. I re uh, you really did understand our lesson for this afternoon. Uh, by the way, I also we all you all I want you to answer this quiz link as well. And do not forget to send your score to your respective teacher in English. Okay. All right, and there you have it. Thank you guys for your cooperation. I hope that you are all learned from our lesson today, okay? Now, once again, this is Mom Vanessa. Until next time, and please stay safe, okay? Goodbye. Makinig manood na sa teleradyo. Makinig manood na sa teleradyo. Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo. Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon, magkahatid sa kakibat ay diskusyon. Sama-sama tayo, kahit magkalayo sa programa ito. Yakang pagkatuto Teleradio Teleradio Marcelo Teleradio Teleradio Marcelo Teleradio Teleradio Marcelo